What is up, everybody? Welcome to the live event, Four Stages of a Trader's Evolution. If you have not seen me before, my name is Joe. I'm one of the co-founders of EasyFX Trading, along with my partners, Danny and Bogdan. If this is your first time seeing us, we just want to say welcome to the group. Uh, welcome to seeing our faces. If you've been with us uh, for a while, you know how we roll. We're going to bring the energy today. Danny's going to bring the goods. And uh, I think we're just all excited to be back on a camera together serving you guys. It's been a minute. Like I think probably the last time we've been on a call together is, I don't know, summer, August, yeah, September. A while. Probably the challenge. The challenge. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. We've been in the lab. We've been in the lab I've putting been. in some really good work. And um, I think the members inside of the group can attest to that. But we're going to get into a lot of really, really good stuff today, guys. Um, all of us are calling from a very, very cold North Carolina today. So let us know where you're tuning in from. You know, drop your, your country, your city, your state, what time it is. We appreciate you spending some time with us. If you got a bunch of emails from us, I'm not sorry. It's just because fault. it is my fault. I want to make sure that if you're in this group and if you're serious about Forex trading and making this a career for yourself, that you understand the work that goes into doing that. And part of that, and what Danny says all the time, is match our consistency. We are not special. We're not more talented. But you can be dang sure that we're going to stay here and put in the work every single day. And the ones that win inside of our group show up and do the work, the boring work, the necessary work, day in and day out, week in and week out. And that's why they're seeing the fruits of that um, discipline and hard work. So I just want to say welcome. Super excited to have you here. Let's let's bump the emojis in the chat. Bogdan, what do you got to say to the, to the crew? Man, I'm just excited. It feels good to be back on these streams. Like Joe said, it's been a while. One thing that I'm personally looking forward to this stream for is just massive clarity at the end of the day. This stream, no matter where you are in your trading journey, whether you're a complete beginner, you haven't even opened up an account yet, or you've been doing this for years and you're like Aaron, you're already on a funded account making good money. Um, no matter where you are, this stream will leave you with supreme clarity on where you are in the four phases and most importantly what you need to be doing to reach and sustain stage four mastery and i found in my journey you know i've been broke i've been i haven't been homeless like danny has but i've been in really tough spots i'm now in a position where i'm not that way i can tell you one of the biggest things that's helped me is self-awareness knowing where i am because until you know where you are Right now, today, you can't make a change. You don't know what to do. You're just kind of wasting time letting things just pass by. So I'm so excited for this stream. I know Danny's going to drop a lot of fire. Um, I worked with him personally, and he gave me this type of clarity um, of just a few years ago that changed my life. Um, so I know he's going to bring a ton of value. So I'm excited for it and ready to rock and roll. Yeah, and I think, Danny, before we get into the, the nitty-gritty of the, the thing, maybe kick us off with who you are real briefly, who we are as a company and why people should pay attention um, to this training today and what they can kind of um, expect towards the end of this call and why it's, it's really exciting to be a part of this group. Yeah, absolutely. I see a lot of new faces on here, which is really exciting. Uh, we got a lot of people on here as well. Um, like Joe said, my name is Danny Reardon. For anybody that doesn't know me or is this the first time seeing my face or hearing my voice, um, Joe and Bogdan are uh, my really good friends and now business partners as well. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I moved from Boston, Massachusetts down to right outside Raleigh, North Carolina, so that we can build this thing. And that's how much we believe in it. We picked up, we packed everything after the conversation with Joe. And we just believed in this thing so much from the idea to where we're at now. You know, we just packed it up and just moved down here so we could just get busy. Um, you know, my journey started where... And I know a lot of you have probably heard my story and, and you know, even today, what we're going to talk about today, it might be a little bit redundant for some of you. But for those of you who don't know, I started out on this journey because I had a daughter on the way. And, you know, I, it was just one of those situations where I was working a really shitty job. You know, bluntly put, I was working a, a job that was paying, you know, just over minimum wage, doing hard labor on an extremely um, dangerous job. I was working on as a commercial painter on big, big exterior buildings on huge aerial lifts every single day. Um, and it was just something that one, it was a seasonal job Two, it was super dangerous. And three, it's just not going to support my family. And I had a daughter on the way. So Katie was going to be out of work, my girlfriend. And I just needed a way that, 
you know, I could support my family, buy the things that we need. I didn't even have a car at the time. I was taking a train to work every single day, commuting an hour from walking to the train, 15 minutes, taking the train across from Boston down to the job site, walking another 10, 15 minutes to the job site. And then I do that back and forth every single day, six, seven days a week. And I was barely skating by with, you know, $2,000. And it was just a, the situation that I was in because of my background. You know, some of you know it, some of you don't. I was involved in selling drugs. I was addicted to drugs. You know, I was recently released from jail. And not long after that, you know, in my halfway house, that's when we found out we were going to have a baby on the way. So my life was kind of in shambles. And I was desperate for a way to, you know, pick the pieces up and, and put things together and find a better way for my family. And, you know, I was probably like most of you, right? You jump on Google and you're trying to figure out ways. How I literally typed in, how can I make money online? How can I make money online? Something that's legal, right? Something that my probation officer will be okay with it. My halfway house will be okay with it. I had literally had the sign. I, I started learning this in my halfway house. I needed to get approval from my counselors. That's how crazy it was. But I saw, you know, I tried all these different things and, and this is what vibe with me. Trading is what vibe with me in my circumstances. And I saw the huge, huge potential here. Massive potential. And that's what really you know, got me um, excited about trading. And then where I'm at today, fast forward, you know, we, like I said, we moved down to North Carolina to be close to the boys. We're in a beautiful new construction house and, you know, um, a really beautiful gated community. You know, life's a lot different now and that's from trading. And now I can, you know, use the skills that I acquired to start a business around the thing that I love and know best, which is trading, um, you know, and, and when you get involved with what we do, right? The reason why you want to be plugged into what we do is because you're learning it from real people who are about real results, who are real traders, actually doing the thing and not just me, but something that is duplicatable on a large, large scale. And we've proven to do this time and time again. We've been doing this for just EFX as a company for just about over two years, right? Just over two years. And, and I've been educating for, you know, probably three and a half give or take, maybe, I'm not even 100% sure of how long I've been doing that. But, you know, we have, we, we're, we're all about the numbers. And what, what our numbers show is that we can duplicate results. And we have a lot of testimonies to back that up. So we're, we're really excited about what we're building here. We're excited about the community that we're building. We're excited to see the results that we're generating, the lives that we're changing. And we look forward to helping you do the same. Well said, man. One thing I want to add before we turn it over to you, back over to you and let you do your thing, is that I, I want to encourage people right now, the whatever, 180, 100 people who are on right now, to, you know, you, you've done half the thing, right? Like you've shown up to this stream. There's a second way you can show up. And that's by engaging. That's by turning off your cell phone, closing all the tabs you have open, giving this full stream your undivided attention. Not only that, but asking questions. It's okay to not know anything. It's okay to not know what to do, but until you raise your hand and just say, hey, I'm happy to be here. I had a question about X, Y, or Z. Until you do that, nothing will change. Until you reach out to one of us, until you send us a DM, until you make yourself known and ask for help, you're never gonna get it. No one's gonna serve you success on a silver platter. I had to reach out to Danny. I had to hit him up and say, dude, I don't know what I'm doing. Please, for the love of God, help me. And right now, today, guys, you have an opportunity to do that exact thing. So during this stream, do not hold back. The only person that you're hurting is you and your family. It, trust me, it doesn't hurt us. So show up today, give this stream your full undivided attention, reach out to Danny, ask good questions throughout this stream, and we'll do our best to handle it and serve you in the best way possible. Sound good? Let's rock and roll. Yeah, we'll jump off screen so Danny can kind of uh, start this thing off. Cool. Well said, and, and, and I just wanna piggyback on what Bogdan said really quickly, and then I'm gonna share my screen. What he just talked about there is the exact thing that I did. Like what we're talking about today, we're talking about a, a topic that if you've been around me for any length of time, that you know this is the topic that, um, you know, this specific topic is something that I'm very passionate about. And we're only gonna be able to scratch the surface on this topic, right? There's a lot to really unpack here. But the stuff that I'm gonna talk about today, it came from me, not happy with what I'm doing, not happy with my results, 
raising my hand and reaching out to people who are doing it at a much higher level than I was. And then connecting with those people, asking those right questions, that's how I was able to receive certain information that I could then go with and, run, and, and use and run with. So that's just super important what Bodman said. Uh, and, and honestly, I wouldn't be where I'm at today had I not raised my hand. You know, I think most people want to stay in that comfort zone. They don't want to raise their hand or they don't want to ask what they think might be a stupid question. But if you're focused on what you want to do, if you focus on where you want to go, then it doesn't matter. All that stuff is irrelevant. You're going to raise your hand. You're going to get uncomfortable. You're going to ask questions and you're going to put yourself out there. And that's what I did. And I highly, highly encourage you to do the same, just like Bowden said. So um, what we're going to do um, today, if you've um, you know been on a lot of my trainings before, we're going to switch it up today. I'm going to hop over um, and share my screen and we're going to hop on some slides just so, um, you know, because I know a lot of people are visual learners. So I'm a visual learner myself. So instead of you just listening to me blab and just staring at my face all day, we're going to slide over to um, some different windows here. Just give me one second here. I'm going to share my screen. A man who asks a question is a fool for a minute. A man who doesn't ask a question is a fool for life. I like that quote. I've never heard that quote. That's a really good one. I like that, Chris. Cool, cool. I was going to read through some of these comments coming in, but I think we got our mods in here so they can help out too. The chat is just going super, super fast. So um, I'm going to share my screen now. Just let me know in the chat when you can see it. Um, I'm using StreamYard, so give me one second. Uh, one second here. I want this one, I believe. I'm going to try to get it full screen. There we go. I think I got it. Give me one second. Can you guys see my screen now? Is it is it full screen? It should be full screen. I tried to. There we go. I got it now. Never stop learning. Yes, absolutely. Always a student. If you always have that mentality, it can be extremely powerful and definitely have a huge impact on your life. Okay, you guys can all see it. Cool. All right, so like I said, this is a topic really that I, I'm really passionate about. This was one of the biggest eye-opening um, topics for me personally. And I know it has been for a lot of people, right? Because the biggest thing when you're talking about trading and the biggest thing that I see most traders really stumble on um, and, and really prevents them from seeing high level success, it really prevents them from gaining any traction with their results and getting them to where they want to go is just not understanding a clear roadmap to where from where they are right here. Let me slide this over here and get to this. All right. So this is in a nutshell what trading is. This is what we're all here for. Wherever you are in your journey, this is your current situation. And this current situation is going to look completely different for everybody. You might be somebody who's brand new to trading, never heard Forex. You might be Googling right now what Forex is or what a PIP is, right? You might be brand new. And then there's the flip side of that coin. And it's people who, you know, have experience trading, but they're not gaining traction. They've, you know, and, and that can be an array of people, people who've been doing this for a couple of months, people who've been doing this for a couple of years. And whatever your current situation is, the goal for everybody is your desired situation. And I call this trading nirvana and trading nirvana your desired situation is going to look different for everybody because at the end of the day, we all have different goals. We all have different trading related goals, but it's clear to say that we all have a current situation and we all have a desired situation where we want to go, what we want our lives to look like, what we want to do with trading, the amount of money that we want with trading, the percent gains with trading, whatever it is, whatever that desired situation is for you, that's what I call trading nirvana. And the biggest thing that hangs people up is when people are in their current situation and they want to get to their desired situation, they think that this gap here, this middle part of going from point A to point B entails learning a strategy, jumping on the charts, figuring out what all these candlesticks mean, 
being able to identify certain patterns, whatever these patterns may be, right? Maybe you learn the, the sessions, the times of the sessions, whatever it might be, you open up a, a broker account. Many people don't even do that and they just jump right into a live account and they're learning a strategy, they're testing the strategy and their process, their thought process or their game plan or strategy is What's going to take me from my current situation to my desired situation is learning this strategy. I'm going to execute it and enter trades on this demo account or live account. And I'm going to do this until I see results. And then for some people, when they see those results and they start, they're happy with what they're making and they're seeing, you know, maybe one month, two month, three month of, you know, good results. Those people on a demo will then transition into a live account. Who here thinks that's the process for you to be a full-time trader, for you to be a funded trader or to make consistent money with trading, that's what you thought this was. Like when you figured out Forex trading or day trading, crypto trading, like that's what your, uh, that's what your vision of it was. This is what I got to learn. I got to learn something on the charts. I got to learn a strategy. And that's what's going to make me money. As long as I can just figure this stuff out on the charts, as long as I can figure out this, you know, holy grail indicator combination, uh, whatever it might be, as long when I figure that out, I'm going to be good. I'm going to be a profitable trader. I just got to sort out this stuff on the charts. If that's you, drop a seven in the chat. And, and listen, I was there. I don't, I don't, I honestly don't even think there's many people out there who, you know, regardless of where you're at, ha this wasn't the picture you had in your head. This wasn't the picture, like I, that, that was the picture. When I, when I, I remember, I, and I'll be open about it, my first trading experience was with IML. And every single thing I saw was a strategy. It's all strategy. This guy's teaching this strategy, this guy's teaching this strategy, all these different strategies. Well, which one do I do? And then if this one's not really working, I'm going to hop to the next one. It was just all strategy. That's what's going to get me and my family good. That's what's going to give me my, my daughter's security. That's what I thought. Honestly, that's what I thought. But then I quickly found out like this is not working. I am stuck. I am not getting the results that I want to see. I see all these dudes flashing all these things, having nice cars. I want that. I want that. This isn't working for me. And then when I got to that point where my back was against the wall, my daughter was months away from being born. That's where I said, okay, I got to do things different. And one of the biggest things that's always stuck with me, and, and I think Bogdan and Joe will attest to this because we do this in every area. We do this with business. We do this with NFTs. We do this with crypto, anything that we're doing in terms of business or financial gains or whatever it might be, we reach out to people who are doing this at a much higher level than us. People who have a lot of experience, people who are doing big, big results and have been doing big results consistently for a long time. We do this in every area. We do this on how to build a business. We do this on how to track our numbers, our accounting. We do this on marketing. We do this for everything we do. And that's the fastest way to streamline your process. And that's what I did. And I remember reaching out to, man, it, it must have been like at least three or four people who I would follow. And they were guys that I knew. And, and two of them weren't like big social media guys, which I kind of vibe with. Because I'm not about like, it. what kind of scares me, it was almost like a repellent, is when I seen guys like just flashing, like, look at all my jewelry look at my Lamborghini, like that stuff's like not why I got into trading personally, like that stuff's cool. Like, you know, would I buy one? I, I probably, I don't know, probably not. For me, it was just, I, I want to make sure my daughter's good. I want to make sure my family's good because painting isn't going to do it. So there were guys that I just vibed with who I reached out to. I sent messages on Facebook and I still have them. I still have them on my, on my messenger. And I reached out and I said, listen, I know you don't know who I am. My name's Danny. I've been learning how to trade and I'm stuck. And I know you do this full time and I wanna do what you're doing. I wanna live the life you have of freedom trading. And that's why I reached out to them. 
And of course, I honestly messaged these guys and I didn't think I was even going to get a response. And some of them did. Some of them ended up responding. Some, it took a little bit before they actually responded to me because I wasn't friends with them on Facebook. So the messages probably got lost or whatever it might be. And then I actually had one guy that really like, we kind of hit it off and we were just, we would always, you know, be talking. And, and honestly, I would just ask this guy so many questions. That's why I related to what Bogdan said at the beginning of the session. If there's, you know, somebody that you believe can help you who's doing this, who's doing the thing that you want to do, reach out to them, ask them questions, right? You, believe it or not, you'd be surprised that more than often than not, they'll be willing to lend a hand to help you. And that's what I got. I got, I, I got a lot of really valuable information. And, and one of the biggest things that I learned is what we're going to be talking about today. These, this is the gap, what we're talking about today. And, and I'll never remember, I'll never forget when I, when I was being told this stuff and I was just like, this is the first time I'm ever hearing about this. How is nobody, and this is what really made me question the industry. And I was like, listen, like how you're either just like throwing some like random mumbo jumbo at me, which didn't really make sense. Cause I wasn't like, you know, the guy had really nothing to gain from helping me, but I was just like, man, like how are all of these other supposed trading gurus or, or guys who are doing this flashing all these cars? How's nobody talking about this? How's literally nobody talking about this and how to treat trading like a business and how to back test, how to do a SWOT analysis, this four stages of a trader's evolution. How's none of these guys talking about this? And that just really blew my mind. And this just for me, that's why I really love this topic because this is what gives so many people clarity about where you are because everybody knows where you're at. Everybody's got a different current situation and everybody has somewhat of an idea of what they want to do, where they want to go, their desired situation, their trade nirvana. But not many people know the gap of how to get there, how to, how to truly get there. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So when I started learning this information, this is just what led me down a trail away from strategy. And it was hard for me to wrap my head around because the number one thing that these guys would tell me is strategy is a very small piece to this. If you want to be a consistently profitable trader, Danny, move away from the paradigm of the strategy is going to, what's going to make it for you. This isn't what's going to do it. That's a, a it's important, but it's not is as important as these other things that you need to learn, the systems and the processes and the structuring of everything. And then when I started to figure this stuff out and I started to learn about this and I realized that the real thing that I need to be focusing on is these things that we're going to talk about right here. And that just led me down into a rabbit hole on my rabbit holes before were strategy. And I would try to combine so many different things. And I have saved templates on my trading view. You should see some of my old stuff. Like they were charts that I would use that had so many damn indicators. It looked like you were looking at the Las Vegas Strip. It was just blinking dots, flashy lines, all different colors. And it was just, it was just crazy. And I moved away from that rabbit hole and trying to combine all these different, you know, patterns and indicators and all these different things that I was picking up from all these people who I thought were doing this. And I transitioned into going down a rabbit hole of studying how to measure trading performance. And at this stage right now, I have personally studied how to measure trading performance for years. Let me just catch up on this. I see the chat's going crazy. Yeah, how about margin and lot size? And it's funny you bring that up too, because like that kind of falls into a lot of these things. Like I can't even believe how long it took for somebody to really teach me like, okay, your stop loss is a huge factor into what you're going to use for your lot size. Like whatever your account size is, if you're risking 1% or 2%, your stop loss is a huge factor in that. Yeah. Your stop loss factors into your risk to reward ratios, but using your stop loss and your account balance and the percent you're risking per trade, like that gives you your lot size. Like it's funny you bring that up because I can't, I, I don't even know how long I was trading where I was just like typing in 
whatever I thought like what good lot size was. And for the majority of the time, I was just typing in big ass lot sizes because I was trying to hit home runs. But like I said, I don't want to get off track. I just thought that was funny when you said that. But yeah, and, and I'm not bashing on IML guys. Like I see a lot of people talking about that. Like I'm, I'm forever grateful for IML because it's how I got introduced to a lot of amazing people. People, you know, that's how I, I, we, I met Bogdan and, and so many of these other guys. And I went to, you know, some of the events in London. I met a lot of you all out in London. You know, it, get, it gave me my start, right? So we all have different starting points. And I think a lot of people in here, one of your starting points was probably IML. So, you know, it was a good introduction. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, it is what it is. But for me, I'm just not about the MLM and the flashy stuff, which can really um, plague the, the real process, like doing the actual thing. Like I'm trying to trade, like that's all I wanted to do. So again, you know, I, I, I put a lot of time, I put a lot of effort, I've worked with, um, you know, programmers to develop certain things that can make tracking um, very effective and efficient. So it's just one of those topics that many traders either avoid or spend little time researching and executing. And most traders simply think of performance in terms of dollars made or dollars lost. And the bottom line, in terms of dollars, it's always going to be the ultimate score. You can't deny that. But along your trading journey, effectively measuring your performance, that right there is going to be the key to becoming a profitable and consistent trader and reaching your desired situation, reaching your trading nirvana. Okay. And most new traders, they're not going to get through that learning curve. And for the most part, it's because they're just simply unaware, like I was, until I started raising my hand and asking questions, the right questions to the right people. And through this journey of measuring your performance and development, traders go through different stages. They go through different stages in their journey and different stages in their results and different stages in their development. And on this journey to reaching your desired situation, reaching trading nirvana, you're gonna identify with different stages. And these different stages, that's what I call to or, or refer to the stages of a trader's evolution. And this is the gap. And this is what we're gonna be talking about today. So again, there is a lot to unpack with this topic, right? We're already 30 minutes in, and I apologize if I've been rambling, but you know, just for example, like in EFXU, we have a ton of content on this specific topic, right? The approach, the objectives, how to transition the stages, right? What are the stages? So this is more or less gonna be what these stages are. That way you're gonna have clarity about how to fill the gap to go from your current situation to your desired situation. And then, you know, we'll, we'll see what we have in terms of time. And then I can share with you at the end, a roadmap that I designed, because I'm a visual person. I know most people are a visual person. That's gonna give you a really clear roadmap of what it takes to go from your current situation to your desired situation. I'll share that with you at the end. All right, does that sound good? If that sounds good, drop some fire emojis. Uh, I've been learning from a teacher that knows how to teach. Been to other videos and by Danny and his explanation of that. And, and the other thing too, like, and, and it's important to know like who you're actually learning from, right? Like, can, like, you know, there's a lot of people like that I was learning from previously that, you know, I guess I just wasn't doing my due diligence or they just weren't who they said they were, you know, that they, they just, they just weren't doing the thing. And, and I'm, you know, you guys know, I'm very transparent. I, I you know, I, I show it and our members show it, right? It's, you know, people get exposed pretty quickly and I'm not going to throw any names out there, like, or bash any companies. That's not what this is about, but you know, people get exposed, right? So it is what it is. So, Let's get into it. Let's talk about these stages. Let's give you some clarity on what each stage is. And then, like I said, we can talk about how you can effectively transition these stages. I need to stop paying for coaches, services that are only concerned with their marketing and not my money. Amen. Amen. 
All right, so here are the stages of a trader's evolution that we're gonna be talking about today. So stage one, I referred to, and I'm gonna explain what all of these are, and, and you're gonna get a really clear idea. And again, if you're in EFXU or if you've been around me um, for any amount of time, this might be repetitive, but it's always good to get refreshers and it's always good to revisit material. I'm a huge advocate on that. That's why certain books in certain um, resources, I revisit one to two times a year. Like Trading in the Zone, for example, that's a book that I read, I try to at least read once a year, sometimes twice if I'm not completely slammed. Because just like the stages of a trader's evolution, I might have read that book the first time when I was a stage one trader, ground floor, I didn't know anything, right? So there's a lot of stuff in that book that he talked about at that stage one ground floor that I had no clue what he was talking about. But now when I, let's say I'm in a, a stage two and I have maybe 12 months of experience and I go back and, and visit that book, now, oh, now I know what he's talking about there. That makes sense now. And every time I read that man's books or watch his four part video series, I learn new things every single time. And I probably read it or listened to it through audio combined 10 times. So it's just really good to get that repetition because if you've heard this before, don't be like, oh man, this is just, I've heard this before. He's got trainings on this. Like it is what it is. Like I'm gonna go hop off something else. There might be something that you pick up this time that you didn't last time. And, it, and it's always good to get that refresher. So again, these are the four stages. We got stage one, this is the ground floor. Stage two, this is the neutral zone. Stage three is when you become a profitable trader. And this is proven or backed or supported by your recorded data, which we're gonna get into. And then stage four, this is when you monetize. This is when you start thinking about optimization and scaling, okay? So these are the stages and no matter where you are, whatever your current situation is, you're in one of these. And most people, right, there's the, the previous slide, this, the current situation to the desired situation. Most people think that is stage one, current situation, stage four, making money, getting funded, whatever it is, that's the desired situation. Most people think I'm gonna go from stage one I'm gonna learn a strategy, I'm gonna go right to stage four, I'm just gonna bypass stage two, I'm gonna bypass stage three. And that's why people stay stuck, never gain traction, never see consistency and end up just throwing their hands up. Or been doing this for years and just not getting any traction, let's scratch their head, be like, what am I missing? And then they go down these rabbit holes of looking for more information and it just leaves people stuck. So hopefully this will give you clarity. So let's get into stage one. Okay, so stage one, this is what I call the ground floor. This is, you know, your current situation for a couple of different people. You're brand new to trading. You don't know anything about trading or you, you know, have experience, but you're just not getting those results yet, right? And I call this ground floor because you don't know what you don't know yet. You're just learning stuff. You're just coming in and you're figuring things out. And here, you're going to either fall into one or two categories, like I said. You're going to have that trading experience or you're going to have no experience. Um, and most people are just not properly taught the fundamentals of a successful trading business or they don't even know what that really means. They don't know how to treat trading like a business, which is more so a mindset. A lot of people get caught up in that and think, I got to really make this like a business, which is an aspect to it. And we go a lot into that, but it's more or less a mindset. And this is the stage where it's really important to understand that the end result here, right? A lot of people will come into trading. And like I said, it's all strategy and they try to, you know, gauge what they're doing by winning and losing trades. Like that's how they're gauging their progress. If I'm winning trades, this is great. This strategy is awesome. If I'm losing trades, this is not working. This strategy is trash. You know, that's it. And that's how they gauge the progress. And then if they don't see what they want to see, usually in a very short period of time, they jump from strategy to strategy or system to system or whatever it might be. Okay, so it's really, really important here. This is the stage where the end result of your individual trades or, or a month sample size or a week sample size is not important. And I'm talking in terms of dollar amount gained or loss, right? You can't expect to see consistent results in stage one ground floor. 
right? And it's not the focus here. Our primary focus until we reach stage three, we call this hy hypothesis trading. And we do this on a demo account with paper money, and it's all about data collection, back testing, and that's it. Winning and losing trades, again, in stage one is not important. It's not important. Your mindset should literally never wander into the realm of trying to win trades because in early stages, people, like I said, search for validation or search for certainty with winning trades. Like I said, winning trades, I'm getting it. This is working. This strategy is great. I'm on my way to the promised land. Losing trades, what does that equal? And here's the crazy part. You guys are going to trip about this, right? Losing trades, we know equals what? Like this strategy is not working. This isn't for me. This system is trash, right? On to the next thing. And does anybody know why this is a trap? Does anybody know why this is a trap? Does anybody know why this is a trap? This is a trap because most of these decisions based on winning and losing trades is on a very small sample size. And it's your own experiences, right? I'm gonna say it again. It's your own experience that can be the most harmful. It's your own experience that can be the most harmful thing because you're basing you're having these ideas or thoughts about something based on such a small sample size. And if you are learning a new strategy and let's say I'm going to hit demo account and I'm going to start testing this strategy. Let's say you jump into this FTME group, you go to the guide section, you watch all the different trainings we have in there about our strategy. And then you jump onto, you know, whatever account, live account, demo account, doesn't matter and you take seven trades. And let's say you lose those seven trades. Your own experience now tells you that this is something that's not working, it's BS, it's trash, whatever it might be. Your own experiences now tell you that. And people go to their own experiences. Why? Because it's the most readily available data. And it's the data that you think you can trust most, which is a trap in this case. You tap into the negative experiences every time you hit a loser. Absolutely, absolutely. Creates negative mindsets, start chasing shiny objects. 100%, it's all these things. And at the end of the day, right, everyone is going to pay to learn how to trade, right? It, it, there's no getting around that, right? You, you, you're gonna, you're gonna pay in losing tra trades, you're gonna pay for a mentor, you're gonna pay for a course or whatever it might be, but you get to choose how expensive those lessons are gonna be. You're gonna be the, the big factor there and how expensive things are gonna be. So again, in this stage, expect to lose trades, expect to lose lots of them. It's okay to, because you're just learning. There's so many different things that you got to figure out in stage one that's going to get you to where you want to go, your desired situation. And you need to just collect a lot of data. And then you can extract strengths and weaknesses and then make changes to your trade plan, right? In stage one, you have a very basic trade plan. And it's going to be very broad. And the idea is to start cutting off the fat, cutting off the fat. I'm testing things. And I refer to this kind of throwing it into a funnel that's filtered. You throw a bunch of different things in there, maybe different patterns, different time frames, all these different things, different pairs. And then you're going to see what comes out the bottom. You're going to find the strengths. You're going to find the weaknesses. And then you go back and you edit your trade plan. And it's a rinse and repeat. And that's going to give, I'll give you more clarity on that when I get through some of these slides. I'm going to show you this roadmap. But, but again, expect to lose a lot of trades here. It's perfectly okay. It's not important. And it's not going to determine your progress. It's not going to determine the end bottom line. So don't caught up in being right or wrong. That's one of the biggest killers in trading is looking for certainty when it's it cannot and will not ever exist in the markets. So don't get caught up in being right or wrong. Don't get caught up in trying to, trying to create certainty or just come out gun slinging and basing your future decisions or ex execution on a very small amount of data. 
Okay, so again, you're testing different pairs, you're testing different patterns, time frames, all these different things. And again, the goal here is to start identifying your strengths and weaknesses using a SWOT analysis, which again, that's a topic for another time. And then that way you can extract them and make changes to your trade plan. So again, we have a couple other things here. This is a couple notes here that is really important. We're trading for data here. We're not an end result. That's all you're doing. You wanna record your trade info on a trade journal. And we have one of the best trade journals available. You can get this right now. It's in the seven figure trading business model in this Facebook group specifically designed by Steve. He, he's one of, he's an awesome guy. He helps us code a bunch of stuff like this. We've made some updates and it's, it's specific to our strategy and records from all the testing and all the studying that I've done on measuring and tracking trading performance. We've made it so it tracks all of the important information, organizes it all perfectly in these summaries at the bottom that you can easily use to extract your strengths and weaknesses applying a SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis, for anybody that's not familiar with that term, it means strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It's something that a lot of big companies, or all companies, doesn't really matter the size, a lot of companies use that to extract these different things to find out what's working and what's not and make the appropriate changes. So um, trading for data, not an end result. We're expecting to lose trades. This is normal and expected. The big thing here is you're working on your mindset. You're developing your trader's mindset. You're training yourself to think in probabilities. I, I like to call this the casino owner mentality. You're trying to think like a casino owner. Casinos don't care if the next hand of blackjack is gonna be a winner or loser because they know they have an edge. And as long as these events keep occurring where they have an edge, their edge will materialize over a large sample size. That's what we're trying to do here. Train ourselves to think in probabilities, remove ourselves from the conventional way of thinking, focusing on wins and losses, profits gained or lost. We wanna think in probabilities because at the end of the day, some of the best trading systems or strategies out there have a 40% win rate or less. And you can put up serious gains with those percentages. So we're training ourselves to think of probabilities, adapting, adopting the casino man, owner mentality. We're working on directional bias. We're working on reading structure, manipulation, entry zones, targets, just finding our way, see what we're reading well, what we're not reading well, patterns we're seeing well, patterns we don't trade well, whatever it might be. And then we log this, we track everything. And then at the end of the month, or some people like to do, you know, 20 to 25 trades, sample sizes. Some people like myself, I just like to do a month worth of data. And then I back test it. I find all these different strengths in our trade journal. Like I said, it's the best, most effective way to do this. It organizes all this important information for you. You just read what it says and listen to it. And then just a couple of quick notes for stage one. Stay off lower time frames. Don't trade metals, indices, exotics, or cryptos, and don't manage your active positions. Trading is one of those professions that you will typically see the best results if you don't interfere. And again, trading on lower time frames, trading these different assets or pairs, or managing positions, I'm not saying you can never do that, but there's a time and a place. Stage one is not those things. You're focusing on a lot of different things. Don't worry about micromanaging your trades or managing active positions. So a lot of stuff there. And again, I can only talk so much about these right now, um, given the time we're almost coming up to the top of the hour. So let's get into stage two, right? So we're gonna basically be able to cover what these stages are. We're not gonna really, um, there's a whole process, objectives, approach, for actually transitioning, getting from stage one to stage two, getting from stage two to stage three, stage three to stage four, et cetera. So there's just limited time here. And again, I apologize for that. So I'll try to make it a little bit faster for this end part so that we can get through and I can show you um, the roadmap, which you're gonna wanna take a snapshot of. All right, so stage two, this is what I call the neutral zone, okay? This is a beautiful thing when you reach this stage because what does this mean? It means you're following the process and you're making progress. You're refining your trade plan. You're making the necessary changes from the strengths and weaknesses 
and the things that you're extracting from your back-tested data, from your trade journal. This also means that you're starting to develop your trader's mindset, which is probably one of the most important things, right? And a lot of traders, they might get discouraged. I used to know that when I was in stage two and I would see some months slightly profitable, some months were just break even, some months slightly lost, right? And you take like five, six months and you add these all up and you, and you find the average there, it was right around that zero point. It was right around break even. That's why we call it the neutral zone. And it used to be very discouraging, but then I realized it was just my perspective, right? I was focusing on negatives when it's actually a positive because this means I'm actually starting to manage my capital. I'm starting to manage my risk and I moved out of stage one. So that's a win. So it's all perspective. And as much as I would love for traders to just, you know, acknowledge that this is the numbers game, right? We're talking about the casino owner mentality and developing your trader's mindset. In most cases, you're not going to be able to experience this phenomenon yourself in order and until you actually use this process, not focusing on the results and seeing the numbers unfold and play out themselves. You have to see it. You have to experience it. Right. I can tell it to you until I'm blue in the face and you mo most people just won't really be able to wrap their head around it until they actually experience it. OK, so we can go over some of these here really quick. Um, and again, just I, I really can't stress the importance that it, it's you can't get wrapped up in stage one and stage two with the results. Right. If you get caught up on gauging your performance like most traders do in terms of dollars lost, dollars gains, wins, losses, being right or wrong, you're going to find it extremely difficult to advance from the first two stages. It's extremely difficult, right? So it's not so much about your results here as it is about identifying your edge, your ability to manage emotions. Because if anybody ever tells you that if you're going to be a profitable trader, you have to eliminate emotions. They do not know what they're talking about. That is physically impossible. If you're a human being, it's just not going to happen. But you can effectively manage your emotions and recognize what's causing certain things to spark in your brain, which force you into certain actions by using what we call market bar feedback, which is part of the trainings. It's part of the trade journal. Okay, so we want to be able to manage emotions, develop your trader's mindset, and identify your best trading style and develop your unique edge within these concepts. So a couple key notes with stage one, or excuse me, stage two. One month of break-even results doesn't mean you've come into stage two. Just like one month of profitable results doesn't mean you've arrived and become a profitable trader. Okay. Stage two reveals that you're maturing as a trader and going beyond an obsession for profits. So don't get complacent when you get here. You have to stay focused, have the right perspective, stay hungry and focus on the objectives. Okay. And I said like this already, stage one, stage two, the approach here is very similar. We're focusing on identifying your edge, your ability to manage motions, developing your mindset and best trading style. And here you can start laying in trade management if you're ready. Okay, so again, the most important thing is creating an effective, profitable trade plan with a positive expectancy over time. Okay, let's move to the next one. Okay, so stage three is your profitable trader. And this is the stage that we're all working hard to get to, right? This is where we want to be. This is where we're you know, we're one stage essentially away from trading Nirvana. Okay. It's also important to point out, you have to acknowledge and respect the fact that you're not going to jump over stage two or stage three and get to your current situation. And, and I, and I'm pretty sure I said this already when I was showing the other slides, you can't just jump over these. This is a process. You're not going to come in and learn something and just go from a losing trader to a profitable trader. I've never seen it happen. And I've worked with a lot of people, a lot of traders over the years. I've never seen it happen. You just don't go from learning something to just being, you know, crushing it. There's, there's a, 
there's a process to it. There's stages to it. So it's extremely important to recognize what these stages are, which one you're in, and what you need to be focusing on in that stage to get to the next one so that you can get to the end goal of training Nirvana, okay? So stage three, really quickly, some important notes, okay? We're working to create a profitable trading system, not a perfect one. We're identifying your edge, managing emotions, developing your trader's mindset. The trader has completed a large sample size of back tests and historical chat studies to find their edge. I don't know why that's not in there. Okay, we're creating a trading plan or a system with a positive expectancy over time, right? The trader is now a manager running their trading system like a business and letting their edge play out over the long run. This is the casino owner mentality. It's extremely important. It, it all goes hand in hand, okay? Stage three isn't determined by one month of profitable results. The stage three trader, this stage, this trader doesn't get emotionally moved by wins, losses, or drawdown. Stage three trader creates a trading plan and best trading style that fits their own screen time, schedule, risk tolerance, return goals, personality, etc. This trader has completed a large sample size of back tests and historical chart studies. I think I said that up here. I might have got duplicated twice, but that's the most important thing here, right? And one thing it's important to understand as well that this process is tedious. This process is going to be difficult. This process is not easy. And it's very easy to get distracted and lose focus if you're focusing on the wrong things. But when you are focusing on the objectives, the approach, and what you need to be actually doing in the corresponding stage that you're in to get to the next stage, it's a beautiful thing when you see these things start coming together and you see your edge start materialize and you're starting to see a positive expectancy. You're starting to build a very effective trade plan, right? That's the most important thing. That's what we're building. That's all a, that's all a professional trader is. Building a profitable trade plan over time and then the ability to implement that trade plan. That's the most important thing. So it might take some people three months in stage two. It might take people six months in stage two, right? There's a lot of factors there. And it's going to be different from everybody based on how much time, how many, how many pairs, what you're trading. There's a lot of different factors in there. And again, I can't get into a lot of the details on this one because we're already about an hour in right now on how to transition these stages because that's a whole other training for another day. But it's just really important that you acknowledge what these stages are, where you're at, and then you're going to have a lot more clarity. Okay, so let's go to stage four. Okay, so stage four, this is where you're monetizing, you're scaling, and you're optimizing. Okay, this is where you have, let's say, four to six months of really nice results as, you know, from a, you're in stage three, right? A lot of people think that when I'm recording this data, if I'm going to be a profitable trader, I need to see profitable weeks, right? I need to say, let's just say I need to see like, you know, uh, a month straight of profitable results, or I need to see five months straight every single month being profitable. Who here thinks that? I would recommend doing it on a quarterly basis. If you can end the quarter with a positive gain, or if you can end, you know, you don't have to have profitable months every single month, right? Even the best, most seasoned traders are going to have losing months. But you're not going to see too many seasoned professional traders have negative quarters. So it's okay to have, you know, sometimes there's just outside things going on. Sometimes it can be a crappy time of year, like November, December, January. Right. There's just some factors in there, but you can take a bigger sample size. That's why everything that you're doing with these four stages, and I can't stress how important this is, it has to be large sample sizes, right? For you to verify stage two, verify stage three, and then go on and say, okay, now I'm ready for scaling or monetizing and getting funding. 
you need to see large sample sizes or you're going to jump the gun and you're going to realize you did it too soon when you weren't ready and you're going to have to circle back and it's going to take you more time okay so stage four this is where we're monetizing now we're seeing a large sample size of positive results we have a positive trade expectancy and now we can go live with real money and for most people especially in our community this is in the shape of qualifying for funding right there's prop firms where you know you can you know um you can get up to 400k ftmo for example they'll give you up to four hundred thousand dollars 80 percent profit share without using your own money if you lose it's on them you can you know you might lose the account but you pass the qualification phase there's two different phases for ftmo you pass those and then they'll give you the account that you select i just initiated a, a, a second account um today actually right and that's how you can get that that's the easiest and fastest and most effective way for somebody to go through this process and then that's the true test right if you're really doing this and you're focusing on the right objectives with the right approach you have to pass the, a test essentially and it's two qualification phases 10 percent, and then an additional five percent and then once that is done you'll be granted the count right my first one was a 100k account then i'm gonna add a 200k account many people start at different amounts you can start as low as 10k and then start scaling right and then once you get on the account you can get bi-weekly payouts you can get monthly payouts you get a profitable let's say your 100k account you make 10 percent 80 percent goes to you and then that can get scaled to 90 percent if you show consistency and they'll increase your account by 25k but if you make 10 percent on 100k account they're going to give you eight thousand dollars eighty percent of that so it's a really really good way of getting to where you want to go your desired situation trading nirvana without you know i'm going to learn how to trade i'm going to get through these stages and i'm going to throw in like a thousand bucks or five thousand right like think of what you need to do and what you need to scale and grow that account to for you to be making enough money for you to re, you know accomplish those goals whether it's quitting your job or you know supporting your family there's a much easier way to do it much much easier way to do it okay so in this stage two now we're maximizing profits and scaling our trading business and we can do this a couple of different ways right expert traders can scale up their accounts in two different methods right one is increasing the account a lot of people think like okay i need to make a lot of money and if i'm on a 100k account and i want to make like you know x amount of dollars then you know i just got to be grinding 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 right Here's a different way of thinking about it. If you can learn or start putting in the work and following this process to get five to 10% a month, five to 10% a month, let's just use a 10% scale. If you're on a $100,000 account and you have a 10% gain and you get 80% of that profit share, that's $8,000. If you scale that to a $200,000 account, let's say you do another challenge, you do another $100,000 challenge, now you're on a $200,000, $100,000 account. So you can combine them. So it's now a 200K account. And let's say you do that same number without doing anything different. You get 10%. 80% of that, $16,000. Now let's say you get up to a $300,000 account. Let's say I'm going to scale from 100K to, and I'm going to add a, um, a $200,000 account. And then you get the account, you pass the qualification, and then you combine those accounts and you have a $300,000 account. And let's say you do the same exact numbers. You get 10%, okay? 10% on a 300K account is 30,000. Your profit share on a $30,000 account, 80% is $24,000. And then let's just say we wanna scale it to the max, which is 400K. And you do the same exact percentage, 10%, right? On, on that size account, that's $40,000, right? At this point, you're probably showing consistency and you probably increased your profit share from 80 to 90%, but let's just keep it at 80%. Now, that same 10% is yielding 32 pre-tax without gaining more. You guys see how you can easily scale that way? And you can just continue to do this. 
it's the easiest way to scale. And then of course the other scaling method is, you know, which a lot of traders will try to do, they'll try to increase their risk to reward and they'll try to make more. That's personally what I would like to do and what I, what I do, and I can show you the numbers and, and real accounts. I go five to 10% a month. Sometimes it might be a little bit more, sometimes it might be a little bit less, but that's my threshold. And then when I take quarters and I add up my gains and I get my average, it's usually right around an eight to 10, eight to 12% threshold. And I don't need to do more. I don't need to trade more and jack up my risk to reward and do all these things to try to make more money. I just scale the account size. And then that way I can make more money without having to do more work. I can keep my consistent gains five to 10% and increase my profits tenfold. So you can essentially go from 100K account, 10%, 8K to 100 or 300K or you know whatever it is, what were we talking about? Um, let's say 300K account, 10%, you know, you're looking at 24, right? And then 32 on a 400K. So just a different way of thinking about it, okay? Now, when you're at that spot, Okay, now you are this master trader, maybe not a master trader, but now you're a full-time trader, you're a funded trader, and this expert trader can make trading look easy because they've put in the necessary time and effort. In order for it to become easy for you, you need to go through the process and know it's not gonna be easy and it's not gonna happen overnight. And even a competent stage three or stage four trader, they're going to face problems they're going to have challenges that's natural because usually at that stage it's not trading stuff or emotion stuff that affects the results it's usually external things happening in everyday life that is brought into trading and it's a continual process but once you have reached these pinnacle stages that can't be taken away from you you have now acquired a skill that can never be taken away from you that can yield extremely large gains that can be scaled it's an it, it, this skill can change your life if you just do the work don't focus on instant gratification and short-term results for the next 12 to 18 months and follow a proven blueprint from people who are actually doing it and can show you results and look what your life will look like in 18 months don't worry about what you're going to do or short-term gains and try to hit home runs and small trades and Try to focus on what your life will look like next week, even if you're in a shitty situation and you lost your job, right? Don't let all these things rob you of a future that you can have as a trader if you just follow a blueprint and not focus on these short-term gratification. Focus on long-term results and you'll have a skill that you can always fall back on that can open up so many doors for you that it, it can be extremely life-changing and it has been for myself and, and so many people of this community and that's why we love seeing it that's why we love doing this okay and the process of becoming an expert trader is exactly that a process a destination is never reached because the goal the only goal is to do what needs to be done in the moment okay so this is what i'm going to show you here this is going to give you clarity if you stuck around to the end congrats to you pat yourself on the back because this is uh, i'm going to share with you a roadmap okay this is the process that we talked about today okay start here and i know some of you have this but i hope this can give you clarity start here is your current situation your desired situation is here trading nirvana this is the machine this is the process for you to go from your current situation to a full-time profitable trader. This is what it is. You're consuming the educational training that we provide. Then you take action. You insert your approach based on the stage you're in. So if you're a stage one trader, for example, you take action based on a stage one status. You record your trades in your trade journal. You take snapshots and you fill in your market bar feedback. All all of that's in your trade journal that we provide here. At the end of the month or your sample size, you back test and review your journal, your snapshots, and your market bio feedback. 
And then you extract your strengths and your weaknesses using a SWOT analysis, which we can't get into that today. After you do this, then you determine your stage. If you're a stage one, stage two, you follow up, you apply the changes that you've extracted from your SWOT analysis to your trade plan, you rinse and repeat for a new month, new sample size, and you circle back. And you do this process until you reach stage three. And then this is when you get into live stage four. And then this is when you reach trade nirvana. So this is a roadmap just to give you a little bit of clarity in the systems and the processes and just a very clear um, visual representation of what we talked about today. Okay, so as you can see, if you're somebody that's been stuck with trading and not getting the results that you want to see, th this might be a light bulb moment for you. If, is, is it, if this is a light bulb moment for you, drop eights in the chat. If this is giving you clarity on what you need to do, drop an eight in the chat. And I'm going to stop sharing here. And hopefully you got value from this call. And again, like I, I know it's a lot to unpack and there's a lot here, right? And we're basically scratching the surface with this topic. This was basically what these things are. And then it's a whole other process of, you know, the actual process of transitioning through the stages of a trader's evolution and what the actual approach is and the mindset and the objectives for each one individually to get to the next stage. All right. Um, so really quickly, before we get into some questions and we can hang out for maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe another five, 10 minutes. And I can go through any questions that you might have about anything that we talked about today. Um, any other questions in general, we can, we, if we have some of those, we can do that as well. But like I said, man, and ladies, we, we're, we've scratched the surface here. There is a lot to um, unpack here. There's a lot to discuss here. Um, and one thing that, you know, one of the big reasons that we made EFXU is because we want to work with a certain type of person. And that's why we have a process that we go through um, trying to, you know, it's an assessment essentially, right? Because we want to work with a person that is, can, is willing to do this work, is willing to show up and be determined to reach that current situation and follow a proven blueprint, somebody that's hungry and somebody that is hungry to get to that stage four and reach that trading nirvana and do this in the next 12 months or less. And that's doable. That's doable. And that's why we have the effects you where I can guide you and walk you through step by step on what you need to do to transition these stages of a trader's evolution so that you can reach your desired situation, your trading nirvana and become a six plus figure trader in 12 months or less. So if you are interested in having a conversation with us and this would reach out, this would look like us reaching out to you, jumping on a Zoom call because we have assessments. We talk about your goals, what you're trying to do, your current situation, your desired situation. And then we invite you into the EFXU and we get to work. If you want to work with us directly, comment evolution in the chat. Comment evolution in the chat. That's for the stages of a trader's evolution. Drop evolution in the comments and our team, it'll either be Joe, Bogdan, um, Andres, or Mercos. They'll reach out to you and we can schedule a call. Other than that, um, we can go through questions. If you have any questions regarding anything that we talked about, anything in general, EFXU, whatever it might be, um, drop those in the comments now. Um, I'm going to pull it up here so I can read through these. And I will hang out for maybe 10 minutes or so. I know we're already long. We're already an hour and 15 minutes. Um, so this is probably gonna end up being like a 90 minute call. And we still have a lot of people on here. I think we need to have like 80 to 100 people on here still. Um, but I will try my best. And, and if Mirko or any of the mods, if you're still in here, can you please help me with these questions? Because I, 
this chat's going so fast i can't even i can't keep up um i'm scrolling up right now so drop your questions now if you have anything you want to talk about any clarity um it can be about anything it can be about what we just talked about today it can be about um, me it can be about the, the team um it can be about anything and we'll hang out for a few minutes and I'll try to answer all these questions. What is the right way to document your mindset in the trader's journal? So that's a tough one to answer, man. Like, um, just for some perspective in EFXU, we, we have, there's probably a couple hours on that specific topic. Um, you know, the biggest thing, right, is in the market about feedback, for the trade journal and that trade journal is available um i can probably pull it up um i'd have to share my screen again um so it's you'll see if you look at the the market bio feedback on that trade journal and i think you go to this facebook group i think if you go into um if you go into um the files you'll see um seven figure trading business model you can download it there but you'll see it's broken into three sections, the before, middle, and after. Um, essentially, you're, you're trying to identify different thoughts, different emotions, different fears that might be present at different stages of trading, right? The analysis, the, the pre-execution, then um, while the trade's active, that's typically where a lot of people start making emotional, impulsive decisions. Um, and then you have the exit, right? Some people will exit too early. They'll see a trade going in their way and then they'll stop pulling back and they'll exit. And you might have fear of loss or fear of being wrong or fear of not making money, whatever it might be. It's important to identify what you're feeling. And then, and then you want to identify what it forced you into. So kind of like what I just said, if you were in a trade and it's, it, you know, it's pushing down and everything's great, you know, the account's looking blue and you're positive and then it starts pulling back and you close the trade. You know, you can say, I, you know, I, I was having a lot of anxiety because things were really looking good and it started pulling back and I didn't know if I should make it break even. And, and I ended up closing the trade um, because I didn't want to, you know, see it come back and take me out or whatever it might be. Right. And then you can dissect that. You can dive into that. That's a whole other process, part of back testing. Um, that we talk about heavily in EFXU, but it's, it's important. The most important part is awareness, right? Having awareness of certain emotions and feelings and fears and what the actions are that it's forcing you into, identify those, and that's the first step in making changes. That's probably the best I can, best way I can answer it given the time, because that's like a that's a that's a training man. That that's a deep one, but I would start there. I would 100% start there. Um, EFXU changing my life and catapulting me as a trader. Take the step and reach out. I promise you won't regret. Thanks, man. Appreciate that, Tony. Yes, a few of us want to know if there is being posted. Yeah, so this is recorded. So um, it's just streamed live into the group. So the second that we end it, it's going to become available in the group and you can watch the replay. What was the book title you mentioned at the beginning? Um, Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. You said avoid lower time frames, but swap fees and going below the allowed losses on a profit firm will eat us alive. These there seems no way, but I don't know how swap fees are that that's cost of doing business. I've never, you know, I can honestly say that I, I never look at that stuff. And in, in my trading partner who is my primary investor. Um, he trades four hour and above. He doesn't ever trade lower time frame. Lower time frame is gonna eat most people up. And most people do it because they want action and they just can't sit on their hands. But that doesn't matter the time frame. The time frame is not gonna affect swaps or fees or anything like that or commissions. I don't, that's, that's false. How do you fill your trade journal? Do you write down trades as soon as execution? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really matter when you do it as long as you do it. 
market biofeedback is probably more of a, a real-time thing. It's so hard to acknowledge when you're doing something wrong. I find myself justifying everything I do with the market. That's where a trading partner can be extremely beneficial and having a mentor. Me, in all honesty, as a profitable daily for our Yeah, so I think you just answered that. He just answered that as well. Basically, Graham said the same thing that I just told you. Um, and then Aaron also answered that as well. Um, thanks, Christian, for sharing that. Aaron as well. Um, yeah, Trading in the Zone. So Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas is a really, really powerful book. Um, you know, he, he was a guy that used to trade for, uh, he was like an institutional trader um, and then you know did his own thing. And he's written a lot of books, a lot of educational stuff. He also has a four-part video series um, that you can find on YouTube if you just search Mark Douglas. He, he's got a lot of stuff. A little, a lot of his stuff, I, I, I believe he's passed away now. A lot of his stuff you'll see it's like outdated, but the information is gold. The information is gold. And you can get this stuff on Amazon too. Like if you go on Amazon, you search Trading in the Zone, you can get like the ebook or the Audible too. Um, I mean, that's, I, I like Audibles but personal preference thing. Um, what is the difference between EFXU and FTME um, night and day? Night and day. EFX, uh, FTME, it, uh, um, I, I almost want to show you. So FTME is basically, here's our strategy, right? So just to show you, like I said, do you remember in the beginning when I talked about you know, when I started reaching out to guys, I used to think what's going to get me to my desired situation was, you know, strategy was like 80 to 90% of the big picture. And then I found out that it was 20%. So in EFXU, we have eight weeks and it's just kind of divided into eight weeks. It's eight sections, essentially. And each section has, you know, seven modules, eight modules, five modules, breaking down specific topics for that. Only two of the eight are about strategy and basically in ftme is it's, it's chart stuff um efx you talks about what i just talked about today in heavy detail um it shows you how to set up and treat trading like a business it shows you how to effectively record everything mark about feedback your emotions um it talks about um you know just how to do all that stuff how to record this information that's gonna be effective and transition you through the stages and how to back test it um, and how to develop an edge and how to develop and build a trade plan, a profitable trade plan. Um, you know, it's, I can probably just give you, Bogdan, is it okay if I give a preview or is that not something I can do? I can give like a quick glimpse of like what it involves. Like week seven, for example, um, you know, many people said week seven could be its own program in itself. It's all about, you know, one of the big things when you talk about the current situation, your desired situation, where you are now, where you want to go. And a lot of people, like I said, think it's the strategy. They think like strategy is like the 80 to 90% of the, the thing that you need to focus on to get to where you want to go. The most important thing to acknowledge and be aware of is that you, as you are right now, is incapable of the results that you want to achieve. And that left me scratching my head when I heard that. The person you are now is not capable of what you want to do, the goals that you want to achieve. So it's more or less when we're talking about being a successful entrepreneur, when we're talking about building a business that generates $5 million a year in revenue, when we're talking about being a professional trader at any level, it's not about all these things strategy and all these other things. The biggest component in what EFXU revolves around, the biggest component in these things and EFXU is understanding that concept and understanding that you need to make a new version of yourself, an updated version, you 2.0, because your current version isn't capable of doing it. So it's unbagging a lot of baggage, unpacking a lot of baggage. It's developing new habits, getting rid of bad habits, how to manage emotions, how to manage fears, how to develop a trader's mindset, how to develop, because there's three mindsets here. There's a mindset, a success winning mindset. 
if you guys want another really good book, there's this mindset or this mindset, right? This is Tim Grover. This is the guy that um, was the mentor for Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, relentless in winning. So there's this mindset, the never give up mindset, the success winning mindset. And then you have the traders mindset, two separate things. And then you can even take it a step further. There's a different mindset once you're at that place where you're making money and you're can seeing consistent gains and the, the amount of money that you're making now goes up. That's a different mindset that's now needed because most people like myself came from a place where I was maybe making $2,000 a month before tax. And I'm not used to, you know, making, you know, seeing a $20,000 wire or a $50,000 wire hit my bank. And most people are naturally in, in their, they want to go spend it. They want to go buy things. They want to go pay off their car. They want to go pay off their house. They want to do all these things, right? So there's a different mindset there as well. So we talk about these different mindsets. We talk about system systemizing life. We talk about all these different things. So it, it's deep. It's deep. And it's kind of, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, EFXU ain't going to work for a lot of people because it's going to require you to work straight up. Most people aren't going to be able to do it. And that's why we literally assess people and determine if you're capable of doing it. If you're somebody that can show up, if you're somebody that can be consistent, if you can literally make a decision and stick to it, regardless of what's taking place in your life. Like the, the mindset I had coming into trading was, this is what I got to do. And I got to do it for my daughter. I got to do it for my family. And I don't care what I got to do. Don't get in my way because I'm going to make it happen. And I don't care how long it takes me. I'm going to make it happen. If you got that mindset, the sky is the limit. The sky is the absolute limit. And if you don't have that mindset, we call that being relentless. That's this. That's the mindset Kobe Bryant had. That's the mindset Dwayne Wade had and Michael Jordan had. You need that mindset. But if if you want to, if you have that mindset or you're ready to put in the work and you're ready to change your financial situation, if you're ready to change your, your life and what it looks like, then I, I can confidently say that I, I, my, what I created there's not much that compares to it. And that's not me having an ego. It's just, I'm passionate about this in teaching real information. That's going to actually help people. That's actually duplicatable. And not something that, you know, just works for me. It just works for a handful of people. And trust me, I don't have like an ego like that. Like that, that's not me. Like, but we, we've, Man, this that we put blood, sweat, and tears into this. Uh, every journey is unique. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I mean, Andres, of course, I mean, that, that can vary person to person. But th what, do you, what do you think happens when you are learning from somebody that has done something, um, you know, whatever it might be, it doesn't even have to be trading, right? Like, let's say, I mean, let's say you're, you want to do something that somebody's doing at a high level, they've been doing it for years, right? Versus like trying to do it your own or, or or do it with somebody that hasn't been able to show you results that they've been able to do it. And you're working side by side with that person, right? Like, that's what I said. Like, that's why we assess people, man. That's why we assess people. If somebody can't show up every single week, then that's not going to work for you. That's why we literally assess people and have an invite. That's literally why we shut down the discord and stop and we refunded $50,000 to people who, you know, working with a broad audience where people can just go to our website and sign up and created EFXU, a private community of cleaners, people who are relentless and work and, and willing to show up every single day. That and following a blueprint from somebody hand by, side by side that's actually done the thing, that can happen in 12 months or less. But of course, there's gonna be variations there. There's gonna be variations.
but there's no reason why somebody can't. If they do the work and follow the blueprint to the T, there's no reason why that can't be possible for everybody. There's absolutely no reason. Anything else is an excuse and you're not working hard enough. Simple as that. Simple as that. Or, or somebody just doesn't want it bad enough to remove themselves from getting in their own way. Uh, we can't show strategy here, but you can go to, you, know, you can just go to the guide section in this group. It's all there. Exactly what you're talking about. Strategy, it's all there. It breaks it all down, the different components and all that stuff. Believe, I'm in it for the long haul, whatever it takes. Beg, bar, or steal. Get yourselves an EFXU. That's the mindset, man. That's the mindset. Listen, at the end of the day, like, if you have a strong enough reason why to do something, like your purpose, right? Like, and I'm not talking about like financial gain, right? Like it's not, it can't be fueled by, I want to quit my job. It can't be fueled by like, I want to make a million dollars or all these things, right? Like that, that's a byproduct of, you know, that, that's a byproduct of success, right? Like that, that will come with success. That's where companies, that, that's why they say like certain companies like Apple and Amazon and, and all these different companies that might have not been the most, um, you know, well-funded or had all these resources in the beginning, but how were they able to become the biggest companies ever in their space when they were companies and other people far better positioned? It's because they led with the inside out. And most people in business lead with the outside in, leading with the how to the why instead of the why to the how, right? That's where you hear that, that quote all the time where if the why is strong enough, the how is irrelevant. So if you are in a position where you can sit down and think about why you want to do something, and if that is strong enough, if that is powerful enough to get you out of bed every morning and have no quit, like for my daughter, that's that's that was my why. And I was never going to be in a situation where I couldn't show up and provide the life that I have now for my daughter because I couldn't get out of bed or stay consistent. That just wasn't going to happen. So if you can have that, right, that's what's going to power you. And then anything is possible. But you have to really have a real conversation with you and, and think about why you want to do something. And then if you have that reason, that purpose, that why, Right, the how's irrelevant. Like we didn't when we built this business, we didn't know how to do a lot of stuff. We just knew why we wanted to do it. And then everything else figured itself out. We figured it out. And then we got in a position where we could hire mentors that could help us build a business and got advice from people who are doing it at a much higher level than us. Now we have people mentoring us who are doing 30 million a year, 50 million a year. Right. No different than what we did in trading. Don't worry, Danny will have to beat his chest never. He has plenty of people to do that for him. He has changed more lives than he will ever admit or probably knows. You put in the work, you will get there, no doubt, right, Joe Barton? Yeah, absolutely, man, 100%. Bro, it's different over here at EFXU. This is another level well above just trading. This will change your entire life. That's all it is. At the end of the day, when you talk about success, and I, and I know I said this, and we'll wrap it up on this because I don't see any other questions where and we've lost some people. But at the end of the day, when we talk about success and you talk about being a professional trader or uh, you know, a successful business owner, right? It's about becoming the person that you need to be. It's not about like, I, I'm gonna become a professional trader. It's about becoming the person that I need to become to in order to be a successful trader, right? That's why you see people receive large amounts of money like winning the lottery and a year later, they're completely broke. They weren't ready to receive that level of income. So you need to become a different person if you want to do high level success in anything, athlete, entrepreneurship, trader, whatever it is, that's what it is. That's what he affects you. That's the best way I can say it. That's the best way I can say it without beating a dead horse. Has anybody so far dropped out of EFXU for not being able to make it? Nope. 
Um, we've had people drop out for um, financial reasons. I think we've only had um, th two or three people drop out for financial reasons, and all of them said they'll be back. It's, it's people that just made a decision that I'm going to do what it takes. Like, it, it's not fancy. It's not like you got to be a certain, you know, you have to be super smart. I, I, I didn't go to college, man. I, I was homeless using drugs under a bridge five years ago, like straight out of jail, halfway house, only skated through high school because I played sports. All right. It, but my work ethic is unmatched. Like, I, I, and I have that mentality. That's all it is. It's just, it just show up, just show up, do what you gotta do. Work on like every day, like all that is, is just me. Like, I know I need to work on me internally. So the external will re reflect. If you wanna be a millionaire, be a millionaire internally first and, and materialize it in your head, visualize that, attract that into your life. And then externally it'll match. That's, that's how it is, that's how it works. That's how it works. I came in a forest for cash. Now I can see that money is a byproduct for sure. For sure. Money is just a tool. Money is just a tool. Money comes with success. All right. Well, um, I don't see any other questions. Um, so again, um, if you're interested in what we're talking about, if you're, you know, want to have a conversation with us, just drop evolution in the chat and then, um, our team will reach out to you. It'll be Andres. It, it might be Mirko. It could be Joe Bogdan. Um, we'll reach out to you on messenger. Um, we can schedule a time to have a face to face or a phone call, zoom call, whatever it might be. Um, discuss what your reason is, your why, your goals, your experience, what you're trying to do with trading, um, and see if it's a good fit. And if it's a good fit, then we'll invite you in and we'll get to work. Simple as that. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed today's call. I know we're running about 90 minutes in now, but, um, hope you got a lot of value. Hope you enjoyed the call. Um, and, uh, if you have any other questions, if you're catching this on the replay, just drop it in the comments. We will... Um, our team's going to be watching this. I'll be watching it and we can come back and answer any of the questions um, that you might have if you're watching this on the replay. Um, thanks, Danny. I know at least now that EFX is not for you. I'm not relentless. No worries, man. And, and that's perfectly okay. Um, and just having the awareness that that's huge too, you know, um, there, there's plenty of ways, that, you know, to make trading work, um, you know, but we will always provide free value too, man. Just like we do in this group, you know, I, I go live in here weekly. Um, we we're always uploading stuff in here. We have lots of resources constantly being flowed in here. So, you know, whether somebody comes and he affects you or not, you know, you, you'll always be able to connect here. So, all right, we're going to end it there. Hope you all enjoyed this. Um, hope you have a blessed day. Stay safe. Um, Cheers, Dan. I'll catch up with you Friday. Yep. And EFX team members, I will see you Friday for our next um, session. Um, take care. God bless. Stay grateful. Stay humble. And I'll see you soon. Take care, everyone.